Before we get started, let's just make it clear. The correct plural of octopus is not octopi. It's derived from Greek, not Latin. You can say octopuses or octopodes. Are we clear? The cephalopods are mollusks. This is the group that includes slugs and snails. The cephalopods diverged from the slugs and snails during the Cambrian period. And their body plan is quite unique. Even the name cephalopod refers to this. The name translates to head, foot, a body plan unlike any other in the animal kingdom. Perhaps the most popular of the cephalopods is the octopus. And unlike other cephalopods, they have completely done away with their shells, the only hard part of them being their beak. Because of this, they're nightmares to keep in captivity. If a hole is bigger than the beak, then the entire octopus can fit through that hole. As well as this, they are intelligent, obscenely intelligent. Like other cephalopods, they have a ring-shaped brain that encircles their esophagus. But here's the exciting thing. Their nervous system is so advanced that individual body parts have their own personalities. New research keeps unveiling surprising and exciting behaviours. A recently published study showed that in interspecific hunting events, when they team up with a fish to hunt something, they will sometimes punch the fish. Why did you do that? Funny. An aquarium once found that their crabs were going missing. Upon looking at the CCTV, it was found that the octopus had learned the guard's route so that it could sneak out and grab some crabs for itself. Remarkable intelligence for an invertebrate. Not only have cephalopods produced the smartest invertebrates, they've also produced the biggest. Giant and colossal squids are known to have titanic battles with one of the biggest predators on the planet, the sperm whale. Nobody's ever actually seen one of these battles take place. They do so hundreds of meters below the ocean surface. However, sperm whales are regularly seen with scars from tentacular hooks of these animals, and giant squid have been found inside their stomachs. They're normally only seen alive at the surface when distressed or dying. Most sightings are of dead specimens washed ashore, but they have been observed in their natural habitat. This wasn't some fleeting glimpse. Deep sea vessels in Japan clearly show the squid sticking around and eyeing them up with the biggest eyes known to science. Some parts of the world are seeing booms in squid populations. The Humboldt squid is typically eaten by sharks, but with finning and competitive fishing, there aren't anywhere near as many sharks as there should be. Humboldt squid are known for their aggression, although there is some disagreement regarding this. As well as an absence of sharks, their populations have risen with the aid of warming climates and currents, notably during El Nino events. These increased temperatures allow for better survival rates for their eggs and hatchlings. An individual female Humboldt squid can produce up to 20 million eggs. Deep in the twilight zone and the midnight zones, there lives the vampire squid, Vampyrotuthis infernalis, definitely my favourite scientific name of any animal. It is the only surviving member of the Vampyromorph family, not a true squid. You can see this among the tentacles where there is a cape, hence the name Vampire. When frightened by a predator, the vampire squid will invert its tentacles to display sharp hooks where you would expect to find suckers on another cephalopod. Unlike octopuses, squids have internal shells, a trait shared with cuttlefish, something you would most likely be familiar with if you own a pet bird. There are about 120 cuttlefish species alive today, with the earliest cuttlefish fossils dating back to the mid-Cretaceous. Cuttlefish are experts at changing colour, using ink sacs called chromatophores to do so. With different coloured chromatophores they can contract and relax the muscles surrounding them to show off the specific colours they desire. With over 200 chromatophores per 0.001 inch, they can do some of the most extraordinary colour changes in the animal kingdom. As well as using these abilities for camouflage, they can also hypnotise their prey. And, just as excitingly, 
they can disguise themselves among other cuttlefish. A big male will guard a harem of females, but then comes a small male, and he's a sneaky fucker. That is a scientific term, by the way. The small male will reveal his true nature to the females and mate with them, while the big male knows nothing about this. Here's the bizarre thing. They're masters of disguise and changing their colour and texture, up there with the mimic octopus. But that funny W-shaped eye, it's colour blind. The very earliest of the cephalopods had external shells. They started off straight, but evolved into a planispiral structure. This was advantageous to evolve because it requires less material to make, and the centre of mass is then close to the centre of buoyancy. A few ammonite species actually survived the KT extinction event 65 million years ago. However, cooling conditions likely restricted their breeding, thus pushing the ammonites finally to extinction 61 million years ago. Some planispiral shelled cephalopods do survive today, the Nautilus, of which there are two genera, exclusively found in the Indo-West region of the Pacific Ocean. Here, other cephalopods would struggle to survive, going to depths of 1,000 metres with little oxygen. What they lack in intelligence, they really make up for in toughness. The planispiral shell is resistant to intense pressures. As well as this, the chambers can be used like a scuba tank, storing oxygen in the deep. A nautilus has regenerative abilities, able to grow lost limbs and gonads, making them the only cephalopods known to reproduce more than once. I have barely scratched the surface with cephalopods today. They are constantly at the forefront of popular science. For example, just this year, a cuttlefish passed the marshmallow test, a fairly simple litmus test designed to test intelligence in children. There are currently baby squids living on the International Space Station. There are squids in space! How cool is that? Cephalopods are really my favourite animals.